everyone, this is Rachel from Sunbear Glasscraft, and in today's video we're going to be talking all about lead cane. As you can see, we are in the new studio. So this is the first video in the new studio. We're still working on it. Uh, off camera, there's a little bit of clutter that we still need to deal with, but that is fine. My work area is nice and organized and we are settled in nicely. Say hi, Molly. Say hi to the camera, I'm in the studio kitty. Mm. Now, I do want to point out that this video is not going to be talking about the leaded style of stained glass, which is using H-channel lead came, and it's not going to be covering zinc. This is only going to be U-channel lead came, which we are going to use on the outside of our Tiffany style stained glass projects. The reason why we want to use lead came from time to time is not only to give a nice professional finish to our projects, but to also add some structure and stability to pieces that might otherwise not be too stable on their own. All of the lead came sizes that I'm going to talk about in the video today were ordered off of anything in stainedglass.com. Of course, all relevant links will be posted in the description box down below. If you like today's video and find it helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing. And I also have my Patreon and PayPal down below if you'd like to help support me in that way. All right, well, let's quit stalling and let's go ahead and get into the video. Let's go ahead and take a look at our five sizes. We have RU01, RU100, RU90, RU70, and finally SU54. Our smallest lead came is going to be RU01. Now, I've only used this maybe once or twice. I don't prefer it because the overall width is pretty small. It's 4.75 millimeters, but this is going to be super malleable and good for smaller projects. For my small projects, I personally prefer RU100, which has an overall width of 5.55 millimeters, and you can see I use it all the time for big projects such as my moth, these little space windows, and even these tiny little UFOs. Very malleable, very versatile. Our next size up is going to be RU90, and I've actually never used this before because the channel width where the glass fits is 3.1 millimeters on this roll, and most of the glass that I work with is three millimeters, so there's not a lot of wiggle room. This cane would probably be useful if you work with thinner transparent glass. Next up is what has become my favorite, which is RU70, and this is what I use for a lot of my pet portraits and big commissions. This lead came has a flat bottom and rounded edges, and I just love the look that it gives. And the main difference between RU70 and SU54 is going to be that the RU70 channel depth is going to be 3.175 millimeters, whereas SU54 is going to have a depth of 3.97 millimeters, so more of the glass is going to be covered. SU54 has flat edges with a flat bottom, so it definitely gives a different look than RU70's rounded edges. SU54 is going to be the most difficult came to work with in this group, but once you practice, it's really not that bad. Now that we've touched on the sizes that I have, I wanted to go ahead and hold all of the little pieces up onto the same piece of glass. That way you can see kind of how they look next to each other and get a comparison for the overall depth and just how they're going to look on your glass. To reiterate, the difference between RU01 and RU100 is going to be their overall width. RU100 is just slightly thicker, which is why I prefer it for my smaller projects. It just feels a little bit more substantial. As you can see here, they look almost the exact same with the only difference being from them being a little bent out of shape. As you can see, RU90 is going to cover more of the glass and therefore give more structure to your piece. This compared with RU70 is no comparison though. RU70 is going to cover even more glass and give even more structure. Now we'll go ahead and slide RU01 off to make room for SU54, which is going to cover the most of your glass and be the thickest and most structural of all of the lead cane. Now, before we move on, I wanted to give one final visual tool for you so you can really understand what I mean when I say channel width, and that is where the glass is going to fit. All of these that I show in this video, except for RU90, are going to have an overall channel width of 532 inches or 3.96 millimeters. This is going to be ideal for working with most art glass, which is on average around 3, 3.2 millimeters-ish, because um, this is going to give you room for your copper foil. 
Most projects you work on are going to have multiple thicknesses and styles of glass. So for me, RU90 is just completely out of the question because I use a lot of thick textured glasses. Like I said, this is probably best if you use a lot of thin and transparent like cathedral glass. In most instances, you're not going to be applying copper foil around the entire piece of glass when you're using lead came, but you still want to make sure you have some wiggle room for where it joins at the very edges of the glass, which I'll be going over later in the video. As you can see here, SU54 and RU70 both have plenty of room for foil as well as accommodating even slightly larger glass that is either thicker or just textured. Now that we've gone over the different sizes in lead came and what those differences are, we can go ahead and get into how we apply it. As you can see on this pumpkin, I'm going to leave all of the edges where the lead came is going to go free of foil. Just make sure that your copper foil goes all the way to the edge because this is going to be what the lead came is soldered to. Once I move my gosh darn little hand out of the way, you'll be able to see that I actually wrapped my foil pretty far down on the pumpkin where the lead came is going to go. Whatever is still visible after we apply our lead came, we can just use an X-Acto knife and cut off the extra. I know I just said to not apply copper foil where there's going to be lead came, but there is one exception. This is a technique that I discovered during my last shop update, and it's going to help stabilize your lead came in problem areas, which I'll show you here with this planchette. As you can see, there aren't many places for the lead came to hold onto, so what I did was applied copper foil on the outermost edges as well as the concave part at the bottom. Whenever I went to apply my lead came, all I did was solder the tiny little strip of copper foil and it gives a lot of structure and stability and makes sure that that lead came is not going to move at all. My first idea for stabilization was what I did with this pumpkin where I used copper wire on the back to reinforce those weak points. I lined up the copper wire with the painting on the front, that way you couldn't see it whenever you were looking through it, but this isn't ideal because I know that I'm not going to have paintings like that on every piece. For any project that I apply lead came to, at a bare minimum I like to solder as much of the front part of the project as possible, that way it has some stability whenever you go to apply the lead came. You're just going to tack the pieces normal and then solder as much as you can without getting too close to the edges. At this point in the project, you don't have to worry about the solder looking pretty. You just want to make sure that the pieces all hold together while you're moving the piece around to apply the came. The reason why you don't want to solder too close to the edge at first is because if you get too close to the edge and go all the way to the edge, this can actually make it difficult to fit the lead came properly onto your piece. I generally stay about a quarter of an inch away from the edge, but as long as you're not touching the edge and there's room for your lead came, it's fine. It's been requested in the comments a few times for me to show my soldering process without speeding up the footage, so that's what I'm going to do in this video as well. Um, I'll put timestamps in the bottom, so if you're not interested in seeing the soldering process, then you can go ahead and skip ahead, but I just wanted to give that heads up that I will be leaving all of my soldering at normal speed in this video.
Now that our pumpkin is prepared, let's go ahead and talk about how we're actually going to prepare our lead came to apply it. When you order lead came online, it's going to come rolled up like this. So not only are you going to have to unroll it, but you're going to have to stretch the came. Stretching the came is very important because it not only removes wrinkles, but lead came is very, very malleable and it's going to stretch naturally over time. So by stretching it, we're going to try to step ahead of that and make it last longer. So the first step is going to be unroll your lead came. I like to do this with it laying on a flat surface and very slowly and gently pull it apart and unroll it. The thicker your lead came is, the more difficult this is going to be. Luckily with this RU100, it's pretty easy to work with. I cut my lead came to size, so once I know the length that I need, I'll usually cut about an extra inch past that with my lead nippers. There's a tool that you can use to stretch your came, and that is going to be a came stretcher. I've never used this before, and actually after I took this video, I realized that I inserted my lead came in the wrong end, but basically this screws to a table, and this provides a strong base for you to be able to pull all of the tension and wrinkles out of your lead came. It doesn't insert on that side, it inserts on the other side. <laughs> The way that I stretch my lead came is by hand, usually on my floor. This is possible for me since I usually work with very short pieces of lead came, but if you use a longer piece, then you're going to usually have to get a buddy to come pull the other end. What I do is I use pliers. Um, here I'm using my running pliers and my grosing pliers, and I grab either end of the piece of lead came. I usually grab about a quarter of an inch on either side and then I go ahead, put my hands down on the ground to stabilize and pull very steadily. Be careful not to pull too hard because you'll see like what I just did is that I pulled my pliers right off of the lead came. That's fine. We're just going to go ahead and reapply our pressure and then pull it a little bit more gently this time. I usually apply pressure for about two seconds, but basically just until I can see that all the wrinkles have been pulled out, and then you have a nice stretched piece of lead cane. With our cane stretched, we can now go ahead and start applying it. When we start our lead cane, we of course want to start where the copper foil meets the edge, and you also want to make sure that the angle that your lead cane is cut at matches the angle of where it's inserting. What I'll do is hold the lead came where it's supposed to start and then wrap it around to make sure I get the proper size before I do any soldering. Once I have the size I need, I usually cut a little bit longer than what I need and then I will cut off tiny, tiny bits at a time to make sure I get the proper fit. I learned to do this, unfortunately, the hard way because there were so many projects that I was cutting immediately too short and then you kind of end up wasting that bit of lead came until you can find a smaller project to use it on. Once I have the lead came properly fit, I go ahead and just try to press it down as much as I can and bend it around any edges that it needs to be formed around. And I also like to wear these hot glue finger covers, which I have gone over in my previous videos, just because you're going to want to hold your lead came down while you're soldering to make sure it has the nicest fit possible. Now, some of the heat will still come through these little finger covers, but it at least lets you tack it and get it in place. That way you can go ahead and solder the rest of it. Sometimes getting the lead came in place is a little bit of uh, it's a it's a little tricky. It, it's it's you kind of have to wrestle with it sometimes. And this is partially why I like to work with pieces that are no bigger than the size of my hand because it can just be so frustrating. It can wiggle around and pop up, but you just gotta kind of do your best and <laughs> make sure you have your solder already prepared and don't get frustrated like I just did. Um, make sure everything is set out, and that way you can just go ahead and solder everything without having any problem. Whenever I do actually solder the lead came on, I like to tack it with just enough to cover the edge because it's the same thing as not wanting to solder all the way to the edge. I don't want to put too much solder on and then interfere with the next piece of lead came that I need to attach. My next piece of the device for working with lead came is to go ahead and solder on the front part of each piece and then 
turn your piece over and tack the back side as well. There is nothing more frustrating than going to solder and uh, add more lead came and then your piece of lead came pops up. It is so frustrating. So make sure you tack both the front and the back. Now, basically all we're going to do is repeat this process until the entire piece has lead came applied. Now, I said I wasn't going to speed up any of the clips, but honestly, this video at this point in editing is already 34 minutes long. So I did increase the speed of the clip a little bit further down and I'll go ahead and put that in the timestamp as well. That way, you know, and can just skip over it if you're not interested in seeing the entire process. At this point, we have all of our lead came applied and all you have to do is make sure you go into those crevices and solder on the outside. That way there's no open holes.
Now all of my lid came is applied, the edges are soldered, and unfortunately I didn't take any video of me applying the copper wire, but at this point our only task is to go in and make sure all of our solder is now beautiful. One warning I will give you is that lead came melts very easily, so when you're going in and making your solder lines pretty, just make sure you're a little extra cautious around your lead came, just so you don't melt it and make it all, you know, deformed and ugly and stuff.
All right, I think that just about covers it for our video today. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!